بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد الشاكرين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها من الأبصار وضيائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد just to remind with regard to Eid, uh, Laylatul Eid is one from the virtuous nights. It's a night of ibadah, a night of worship. So the day and night of Eid is there for worship. And the purpose of congregating in the nights of Eid is in order to remind the ibadullah with regard to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our purpose in our life is not anything except the ibadah of Allah. This concept is known as ubudiyah, servitude. We are born as slaves of Allah. What does that mean? Everything belongs to Allah. This is why when someone dies, we say, inna lillahi inna ilayhi ra wa inna ilayhi why, why do we say this? Because it means what? We are for Allah and we should, we should so surely go back to Him. Because everything is the milk of Allah, the possession of Allah, the property of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are in what? The mulk of Allah, the kingdom of Allah. So when we are born, we are born naked. When we die, the overwhelming majority of us will only leave with what? Two pieces of cloth to shroud. So in between, from the time of birth until we die, the reality is we only leave the dunya with two pieces of cloth. Now everyone says this as a cliche, but no one actually lives this. What do I mean by not actually living this? Today people they com complain about their problems in their lives. But if you look at most of the problems, most of the time, for the majority of the time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves us in a state of well-being. We are in good health. We have wealth for the majority of our times. We have food, we have drink, we have safety. Then what are the majority of our problems stemming from? You will notice the ego. The human ego is so powerful, the shahwat, the desires, that a person becomes blinded by his ego to see the truth. And when the ego overwhelms an individual, then they cannot see their problems being caused by their ego. They see society as the problem, they will see their family as the problem, but they will not look at their ego as the main problem. Ego is such a thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated in the month of Ramadan fasting for us in order to learn restraint. So when we cannot eat and drink in the daylight hours, we learn restraint. There are people who in the month of Ramadan, they will swear and curse, they will fight. They may stay hungry and thirsty, but they achieve nothing except hunger and thirst. They have no reward. Why? Because their ego at that time, if you notice at the time of iftar, so many people, they'd be rushing home. So many fights happen in so many homes at the time of iftar because people's egos are annoyed at the time. Why are they annoyed? Because all day the ego has not had food and drink. So the ego is overwhelming society to the point that even Yawm al Eid becomes a day of ego. People rent cars to demonstrate their ego. The ego is love of wealth, love of fame, love of notoriety, love of reputation, love of materialistic things to the point that people, they will disregard the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when society is against them, or when people are against them, they wonder why is society and people against me, but they do not realize that all their lives they have lived disobeying Allah. And now when people disobey them, their ego becomes annoyed. All their lives they disobeyed Allah, disregarding the salah, the five daily prayers, disregarding the sharia of Allah, 
disregarding hijab, the covering, which the hijab, which is fard on women, disregarding all the various laws, the prohibition of alcohol, the prohibition of cannabis, thinking nothing of it, doing it as second nature, and then when they are tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all they do is complain. Why? Because the ego has overwhelmed them. So the month of Ramadan is a month to train the people with regard to their egos, to make them realize that the ego should not dominate the human being. What should dominate the human being is ubudiyah, servitude to Allah. That the, the person who realizes his servitude to Allah is the true servant of Allah. He's the wise person. How do you make your servitude to Allah dominate? by increasing your love of Allah and increasing dhikrullah. Increasing our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increasing our dhikrullah. How do we increase our love for Allah? Just look at the multiple favors Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Imagine those people or conceptualize those people whose homes have been destroyed in earthquakes or bombings or people whose families have been killed through war and torture, or people who face imprisonment, falsely charged with something, or people who are maimed, or people who have lost their immune system, or people who are in hospital now with cancer dying. There are people from amongst those people who even still in those times of difficulty, still are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point of this reminder is that remember ultimately in life closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more important than anything else. At taqarrub in Allah. Closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is more important than anything else we may think deem as important. When a person makes his ultimate goal to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of all his affairs. But when a person's goal is his ego or to fulfill a desire or anything else, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places the dunya in front of his eyes, but he is unable to attain the dunya. But when a person chases after Closeness to Allah, the dunya chases him the way the shadow chases a person running away. But when a person chases his own shadow, the shadow runs away from him. This is how the dunya is. When a person runs after dunya, the dunya will run away from him. <laughs> dunya doesn't last. Someone may be rich one year, he loses all his wealth the other year. Someone may be healthy one year, he loses his health the other year. Everyone says this as a cliche. But what is the reality of living this? The reality of living this is making dhikrullah, remembrance of Allah, your ultimate goal. When you reach a point when you can sit alone and you, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through reading the Quran, through reading the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through mentioning the name of Allah, through doing tasbih, to doing istighfar, to doing tahleel, to doing hawqala, saying la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. And you feel the sweetness of the dhikr. dhikr. You feel the sweetness of halawatul iman. This is the ultimate goal. at taqarrub with Allah. Closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are benefits of dhikrullah in the dunya also. Like in one hadith narrated by Imam al-Hakim al-Mustadrak. That the la hawla wa la quwata illa billah is what is dawa, a medicine for what? For 99 illnesses. Aysaruha al the least of which is worries and stress. The least of which is worries and stress. The person recites la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, it removes 99 different types of illnesses, the least of which is worries and stress. This is just a worldly benefit. But a, a, a person who is a dhakir, a remember, the one who remembers Allah, he does it for remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not necessarily for the benefit. If a person 
all his life he doesn't realize that this is the old uh, the sole aim of my life the goal of my life and he passes the age of 40 then he has wasted his life and imam abu hamid al-ghazali rahimallah ta'ala says when a man reaches 40 the shaitan rubs his hand on his face saying i'm finished with you because it's very rare that a man who passes 40 changes after the age of 40. Changing habits is like making water run upwards. That the, the, the habit of water or the nature of water is to run downwards, downstream. But you cannot make it run upwards. Changing habits and changing oneself after 40 is an uphill struggle, difficult. It can still be done. But a person, Al Imam Abu Hamid al Ghazali also says if a man reaches 40, and his good deeds are less than his bad deeds, then let him get ready for the hellfire. What does this mean? It doesn't mean that he's going to go to hell. It means let him prepare for the akhirah and increase his good deeds. But look at most of the 40-year-olds today, 40 plus. They are engrossed in dunya. And they never learn from death. They never learn from events that transpire around them that they should be focusing and gaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if a person goes hajj, he grows a white beard, his bad habits never go away. The bad habits of argumentation, the bad habits of swearing and insulting, the bad habits of cheating and lying, the bad habits of continuously embroiled in disputations, the bad habits of laziness, of lack of responsibility, the bad habits of abandoning salah, the bad habits of not gaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the bad habit, habit of bad company, the bad habit of smoking cannabis, the bad habit of drinking alcohol, the bad habit of gambling, the bad habit of backbiting, the bad habit, habit of slandering ulama, the bad habit of oh, so many things that you can list and list and list that after 40 a person should realize that he should be preparing for the grave. They say regarding Ahlul Medina, the people of Medina al Munawwara in the ancient times, they would work from the age of 16 up to the age of 40. They would earn money and trade. But they were honest traders, not like the traders we have today. When they would reach 40, they would pack away their trade and they would sit in the masjid, meaning they earned enough to live off that money, and they would do, engross themselves in ibadah, in worship, in reciting Quran, attending majalis of hadith, gatherings of listening to the hadith. Here in the masjid, we have gatherings of hadith, Mishkat al Masabih is recited, the Al Jami of Imam al Tirmidhi is recited. And soon, inshallah, we shall have recitings of Al Qutb al Sitta, the six books of Hadith. We have Tafsir al Quran. We have classes held on fiqh, learning jurisprudence, learning halal and haram, learning your basics. And even if they are, they are advanced classes, people can still attend and benefit. But how many people are engrossed on watching Netflix or YouTube? or Sky TV, or whatever else they watch. They are engrossed in hours and hours and hours of watching television, but then they claim they have no time for a dars, for a lesson. They have no time for Quran. They have no time for Hadith. They have no time for Arabic language. These are all excuses, especially those people who pass the age of 40. But with the young pe younger people, remember that the, this bid'ah of Chandrat, what they do is they congregate and then they play music and then people dance and they take drugs, people are taking balloons, they fill the balloons with nitrogen or laughing gas, Young, younger people are doing this, but elder people as well, now the above 40s behave like 15 year olds, even their haircuts are like 15 year olds, the behavior, the, the, the attitude, and then they take these balloons, they take cannabis, all of this and what they refer to as the bid'ah of Chandrat, they refer to it as Chandrat, the bid'ah, the celebrations are bid'ah. So those people who condemn bid'ah, they should really condemn this bid'ah. 
the real bid'ah uh, haram, what they do, they congregate and then they, they do all sorts of haram. Is what the purpose of Eid is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before it is too late. Do not think that the angel of death is not waiting for us. And those who are attached to the Ahl of Dunya, to the people of Dunya, they wait for death so people on earth can mourn them. But do not think the people of earth, no matter how good you are, the people of the earth will ever remember you. You can be as good as you want for the people, but the people will never remember you. But if you are good for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who never forgets. Meaning even our goodness towards others should be for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of people. Because if you be good to others for the sake of people, they will forget you even when you die. Some people, let me tell you honestly, you will give people so much time or people could be related to you, but when you die at the end, they may not even attend your funeral. Not out of despite, because they may not even have time. Someone may say, I have no time, or I need to be in another city. Think about it, how many people you will know, but at the end when you die, they will not even attend your funeral. So therefore, when you do goodness, when you are kind to others, you do it for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of the people, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forget. He never forgets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not ascribed with forgetfulness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always remember you. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from ibadullah salihin, good people who are pious who increase in dhikrullah, in taqwa, in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private and in